It's true. I use silicones. <coughs> hey now, my babies. It's your girl T, aka the Naffy Head Jehovah, and you read the title right. Sometimes I use silicones, and I just wanted to talk about when I use them and why. Now, to be fair, I don't use silicones frequently or regularly by any stretch of the imagination. And that is because I don't need to, and I don't need to risk them building up on my hair strands, especially since I don't use very aggressive shampoos, again, unless I need to. However, there is a time and a place for silicones. And for me, that is when I know I am going to be heat styling. You may have seen my recent video where I compared the Revlon blow dry brush to a thermal straightening brush. Well, I knew I was going to be doing that. I knew I was not only going to be making that video, but generally putting heat on my hair. And silicones are a very effective heat protectant. Somewhere along the way, this myth of oil, like grapeseed oil, being a heat protectant got started. I think because someone decided that, oh, I see that grapeseed oil has a smoking point of like 400 degrees or something. That makes it a great heat protectant. Absolutely not. Oils are a conductor, so it's basically doing the opposite of what a heat protectant will do. In any event, I knew I was going to be putting heat on my hair with those two heat appliances, comparing those two hot brushes. So the first layer of silicone protection I went with was choosing a deep conditioner that contained silicones. Specifically, I went with the Affigy Curlific Texture Treatment. I had never tried this before, but I remember seeing a review on this a long time ago and it was a rave and I, kind of had it on my radar, but because I don't typically need or want conditioners with silicones on just a regular degler wash day, there wasn't any place for it. But I knew I wanted one for this wash day, so I went ahead and tried it. It was $7.99 at my local beauty supply store, and I am going to close this jar right now because I hate the way this smells. It is fragrant. It stings the nostrils. It is an extremely overbearing, floral, granny, beauty supplies from 1987 kind of smell. I hate it, but as far as the conditioner goes, it's actually mad decent. I guess I'll just go ahead and do a mini review of it. I thought it was rather expensive at $7.99 for an eight ounce jar. And as you can see, I used almost all of it because I really wanted to make sure that I coated each and every one of my strands so they would get that layer of silicones as well as the hydrolyzed proteins that are in here. Would I buy this again? Maybe. I think what I would do is the next time I know I'm going to be heat styling my hair and if I wanted a silicone conditioner, I might use this and just dilute it, like mix it with something else. Because one, the texture, oh, she thick. She ain't going nowhere. So it was almost like spreading like a, a paste through my hair. It was, it was almost too thick. I didn't really think I could ever find a conditioner that would be too thick for me because I really love thick, deep conditioners, and that's thick with two Cs. But this, I feel like it would have been easier to spread if the texture were mixed with something a little bit more creamy because it's thick, but it's not creamy. But my hair did feel quite nice after I rinsed it out. I felt like it did a good job even with detangling, you know, ish. I didn't do my usual detangling in the shower under the water because you know, it sometimes can take a long time and because I didn't know how long it was going to take me to detangle, I didn't want to risk being in the shower and wasting all that water because this didn't have enough slip or whatever. So I actually just detangled my hair with this still in there after I had used heat at my sink. And it wasn't bad at all. I feel like it probably took me 45 minutes to detangle, which is really good for me. So even though it's not the most slippy conditioner, it seemed to have softened my hair enough to get it manageable enough and cooperative enough for me to be able to get through my condition, or uh, my detangling rather, relatively easily. And that does include comb detangling. I was prepping my hair for a curl former set, which was to prep my hair for the blow drying that I was gonna be doing later. So I really wanted to make sure that my hair was as detangled as possible prior to even going into the curl formers. While we're on the subject, I went ahead and detangled my hair. I had my hair in some pretty medium large twists after that. I probably had a good 15 different twists, maybe even more throughout my head after I had done detangling. So I kept those twists in as I rinsed the conditioner 
rinsed it uber, uber thoroughly. And then when it was time for me to install my curl formers, I went with this. Rider dies know that my usual for curl former sets is the Jane Carter wrap and roll foam. This time I decided to go with this one because this one claims to be a heat protectant up to 450 degrees. While this product does not contain any silicones that I can recognize by name, sometimes silicones don't end in O-N-E by the way, so it might have some silicones in here. I did um, see some ingredients in here that I didn't necessarily recognize, and I suspect that maybe those are the ingredients providing heat protection. So this was my next step in just getting my hair protected before I actually applied my proper serum style silicone heat protectant, which I used immediately before going in with the hot brush or brushes since I was trying two different types. As well, I knew I was going to be sitting under my hooded dryer with the curl formers for 45 minutes to an hour. So I did want to make sure I had a little bit more protection on there as well. So this product actually I, I quite liked. It doesn't have as much slip to it as the Jane Carter solution, but my hair came out really nice. It was one of the best curl former sets I've gotten ever, probably because I actually combed through each section of hair before installing each curl former. So I really was working hard to do my best to make sure that I could get the sleekest, straightest result I could with the curl formers so that the thermal brushes would have less work to do later. But I really like that this has heat protection in it, or at least it claims to, and it gives me more peace of mind with whenever I'm going to be doing curl former sets under my dryer, which is pretty much all the time because I despise sleeping in curl formers. I of course used your classic silicone style heat protect, and I just grabbed one that I've had in my stash for years because I use heat so infrequently. I've been working on the same bottle of heat protectant for years. I don't even think the one I have is available anymore. I think it's been discontinued by the brand, but there's lots of ones out there. I think the Icy Fantasia one is very popular. My friend uh, who is Latina, she's got very curly hair, hair and she never wears her hair curly. The only time I've ever seen it curly was when she was in law school and just literally didn't have time to straighten her hair, but she's a big fan of Chi Silk Infusion. So there's lots of silicone based heat protection serums out there to choose from. The main thing for me was making sure I used a uh, heat protectant at the stage of blow drying that did not start off with water as the first ingredient. I wanted a silicone based uh, serum because I didn't want my hair to revert from the curl former set I had just ruined my night sleeping in because I had installed them too late and had no other choice. Throughout each step, I focus on using lightweight products that wouldn't weigh my hair down as well. So I wanted the, the actual protection, but I didn't want my hair to be bogged down with very heavy products. So that's another thing to keep in mind because here's a clip you can see as I had straightened uh, some of my hair on this side. It looks quite light and fluffy and not weighed down at all, but it's still got fairly straight from the hot brush, which I really quite liked. In the end, things like shea butter and grapeseed oil are terrific for hair care in terms of being emollients that you can add to other products to make them more rich or as sealants to seal in your moisture, but they are not heat protectants. If you have success using only those products to protect your hair from heat, then Godspeed. But if you actually are concerned about mitigating any damage that your hair might incur from using heat or heated tools on your hair, get you a proper heat protectant with some silicones, girl. That is it for this one. I hope that this will help to dispel any confusion over what the best way is to protect our hair when we're going to use heat tools because grapeseed oil ain't it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that. <laughs>